Welcome to the Geography of Turkey 2, Human and Economical Geography of Turkey course. In this lesson, we will discuss the classification of settlements in Turkey and rural settlements, which are important settlement types. You can send your questions and opinions via the eCampus website or email. Classification of Settlements Today, we delve into the fascinating world of human habitation and explore how settlements can be systematically classified. This categorization offers us valuable insights into the diverse nature of human communities and their habitats. Let's break down the classifications. 1. Geomorphological Units Settlements can be categorized based on the geomorphological units where they were established. This means considering the natural landscape and formations as a key determinant of settlement locations. 2. Shape and Texture Features Another intriguing classification is based on the shape and texture features of the settlements. This approach involves analyzing the physical characteristics and layout of the structures within a settlement. 3. Functional Characteristics Settlements also vary in terms of their functionality. Some are bustling urban centers, while others serve specific purposes such as agricultural or industrial functions. We categorize settlements based on these functional characteristics. 4. Administrative Duties The administrative duties of settlements play a crucial role in their classification. Some are designated as administrative hubs, overseeing a region or district, while others may serve a more localized administrative purpose. 5. Usage Periods Settlements can be categorized by the periods during which they were established and thrived. This historical perspective helps us understand the evolution and continuity of human settlements. 6. Population Size Perhaps one of the most straightforward classifications is based on population size. Settlements range from small hamlets and villages to sprawling metropolises, each with its unique dynamics. In conclusion, the classification of settlements is a multidimensional lens through which we can study human societies and their interaction with the environment. By employing these classifications, we gain a richer understanding of the diversity and complexity inherent in the tapestry of human settlements. Distinguishing Features of Rural and Urban Settlements Today, we embark on a journey to unravel the distinctive features that set rural and urban settlements apart from each other. As we explore the nuances of these human habitats, we will focus on key elements that define their character and dynamics. Let's delve into the distinguishing features. 1. Population Quantity one of the fundamental factors that differentiate rural and urban settlements is population size. Rural areas are typically characterized by smaller, tight-knit communities, while urban areas boast larger and more diverse populations. This contrast in numbers shapes the social fabric and lifestyle of each settlement type. 2. Administrative Structure The administrative structure plays a pivotal role in distinguishing between rural and urban settlements. Urban areas tend to have more complex and centralized administrative systems, reflecting the diverse needs of a larger populace. In contrast, rural areas often feature simpler, decentralized administrative structures aligned with the smaller community size. 3. Division of Labor Another crucial aspect is the division of labor within these settlements. Urban areas showcase a higher degree of specialization and a diverse range of professions due to the larger and more varied economic activities. In rural settings, there is often a more traditional and self-sufficient division of labor, with community members engaged in a variety of roles to sustain local needs. 4. Planning Status The level of planning and organization distinguishes rural and urban settlements. Urban areas typically exhibit more comprehensive planning, with structured layouts, zoning, and infrastructure development. Rural areas, on the other hand, may follow more organic growth patterns and have a less formalized planning status. 5. Livelihoods Livelihoods in rural and urban settlements are shaped by distinct economic activities. Urban areas thrive on diverse economic sectors, including commerce, industry, and services. In rural settings, agriculture often dominates the economic landscape, influencing the lifestyle and livelihoods of the community. In conclusion, the distinguishing features between rural and urban settlements offer us a lens through which to analyze the rich tapestry of human habitation. Understanding these characteristics enhances our appreciation for the diverse ways in which communities shape their identities based on their settlement type. Population Dynamics in Urban and Rural Settlements Today, 
we explore a fundamental aspect that shapes the very essence of human habitation, population quantity. The contrast between urban and rural settlements regarding their population dynamics is a key factor in understanding the diverse landscapes of human communities. Let's delve into the intriguing realm of population quantity in these distinct settlement types. Urban Settlements 1. Size and Density Urban settlements are characterized by larger and more concentrated populations. The term urban often conjures images of bustling cities with towering skyscrapers and crowded streets. The sheer size and density of urban populations create a dynamic and diverse social environment. 2. Migration and Mobility Urban areas attract a constant influx of people seeking employment, educational opportunities, and a cosmopolitan lifestyle. Migration patterns contribute to the continuous growth and mobility within urban settlements, resulting in a melting pot of cultures and backgrounds. 3. Economic Activities The economic vibrancy of urban areas, driven by commerce, industry, and services, fosters job opportunities that draw people from diverse regions. The dynamic nature of urban economies fuels a higher rate of population growth and turnover. Rural Settlements 1. Small and Scattered In contrast, rural settlements exhibit smaller and more scattered populations. Villages and hamlets nestled in the countryside often have close-knit communities where individuals share common ties and a sense of belonging. 2. Stability and Tradition Rural populations tend to be more stable, with a lower turnover rate compared to urban areas. The ties to the land, agricultural practices, and community traditions contribute to a more rooted and traditional lifestyle. 3. Challenges of Decline some rural areas face challenges associated with declining populations due to factors such as aging demographics, limited economic opportunities, and migration to urban centers. This demographic shift raises questions about the sustainability of certain rural settlements. In conclusion, the population quantity in urban and rural settlements serves as a defining characteristic that influences various aspects of community life. Understanding these dynamics enhances our insight into the unique challenges and opportunities presented by these diverse human habitats. Administrative Structures of Settlements in Turkey Today, our exploration takes us into the intricate administrative structures that govern the diverse settlements across Turkey. Understanding the administrative framework is crucial for unraveling the complexities and dynamics of governance within these communities. Let's delve into the administrative structures that define settlements in Turkey. 1. Urban Settlements Metropolitan Municipalities in larger urban centers, particularly cities with significant populations, metropolitan municipalities play a central role. These municipalities have broader administrative powers, overseeing a wide range of services, including transportation, infrastructure, education, and healthcare. Municipalities Municipalities, both central and district level, form the backbone of urban governance. They are responsible for local services, such as waste management, urban planning, and community development. The mayor, elected by the local populace, leads the municipality. Neighborhoods, Mahals Urban areas are further subdivided into neighborhoods, known as Mahals. Neighborhood administrators, appointed or elected, handle local issues, fostering a sense of community at the grassroots level. 2. Rural Settlements District Municipalities in rural settings, districts serve as administrative units overseen by district municipalities. District municipalities play a pivotal role in coordinating services for a larger geographical area, covering various villages and hamlets. Village and Town Councils At the village and town level, councils are instrumental in local governance. Elected representatives, often called mutters, lead these councils, focusing on issues pertinent to their specific communities. The Mutar serves as a bridge between the local population and higher administrative bodies. Provincial Governance Provinces, each comprising several districts, play a role in coordinating services and policies across a broader rural landscape. Provincial governors, appointed by the central government, are key figures in ensuring the implementation of policies at the provincial level. 3. Special Administrative Structures Metropolitan and Provincial Special Administration some settlements, especially those with special characteristics or historical significance, may fall under metropolitan or provincial special administration. These entities have specific duties and responsibilities tailored to their unique circumstances. In conclusion, the administrative structures of settlements in Turkey reflect a tiered system that addresses the diverse needs of both urban and rural communities. 
Understanding these structures enhances our appreciation for the nuanced governance models that contribute to the functioning and development of settlements across the country. Administrative classification of rural and urban settlements in Turkey. Today, we explore the pivotal role that administrative structures play in classifying settlements as either rural or urban in Turkey. The distinction is drawn based on the presence or absence of provincial and district centers. In Turkey, areas encompassing provincial and district centers are classified as urban. These centers serve as administrative hubs, overseeing a myriad of services and functions. On the contrary, areas lacking these administrative centers are categorized as rural. It is noteworthy that a significant majority, 93% of the population, resides in urban areas. This prevalence is attributed to the extensive coverage of provincial and district centers, reflecting their substantial geographical footprint. Understanding the administrative criteria for classifying settlements provides valuable insights into the distribution of population and resources in Turkey. As we delve into the dynamics of urban and rural settings, this administrative lens allows us to comprehend the nuanced landscape that shapes the living conditions and governance structures within these diverse communities. Classification of Settlements in Turkey If we delve into the intricate classification of settlements in Turkey, a nation where the diverse geography and rich cultural heritage give rise to a mosaic of human habitats. The categorization of settlements is multifaceted, encompassing rural and urban distinctions, each further nuanced by specific characteristics. Let's explore these classifications. Rural settlements. 1. Geographical characteristics. Isolated, collective, mountainous, rural settlements can be visually categorized based on their geographical characteristics. Isolated settlements stand alone, while collective settlements cluster together. Mountainous settlements thrive in elevated terrains, reflecting the adaptability of communities to diverse landscapes. 2. Mass settlements. Linear, circular, grid system, mass settlements, often prevalent in rural areas, exhibit different spatial patterns. Linear settlements align along a linear feature, circular settlements radiate from a central point, and grid system settlements follow an organized layout. 3. Administrative functions. Village, Sub-village, administrative functions play a pivotal role in rural classifications. Villages are governed by a headman or mayor, while sub-village settlements lack a designated headman. Further categorization considers the duration of use, distinguishing between permanent and temporary village settlements. Urban settlements. 1. Population and economic functions. Small, large, medium-sized, metropolises, megapolises, Urban settlements are classified based on population size, ranging from small towns to megacities. Economic functions further diversify urban areas, including trade, industry, tourism, mining, religious, university, and military cities. 2. Administrative structure. Capital cities, provincial centers, district centers, administrative functions define the hierarchy of urban settlements. Capital cities serve as the political epicenter, provincial centers oversee broader regions, and district centers play a localized administrative role. 3. Cultural and security characteristics. Cultural structure, urban settlements also vary in cultural richness, influenced by historical legacies and contemporary dynamics. Security features are crucial, especially in cities with specific security needs. Understanding these classifications provides a comprehensive lens through which we can analyze the intricate tapestry of settlements in Turkey. As we navigate through rural and urban landscapes, these distinctions illuminate the diverse dynamics that shape the lives of communities across the country. A rural settlement refers to a community or group of dwellings located in rural or non-urban areas characterized by a predominance of agriculture and natural landscapes. These settlements are typically smaller in size compared to urban areas and are often associated with agricultural activities, farming, and a more traditional way of life. Key features of rural settlements include 1. Agricultural focus. Rural settlements are often situated in areas where agriculture is a primary economic activity. The community may be engaged in farming, livestock raising, and other related activities. 2. Low population density. Compared to urban areas, rural settlements generally have lower population densities. The communities are spread out, and the distance between individual homes or farms may be greater. 3. Natural surroundings. Rural settlements are characterized by open spaces, greenery, and proximity to nature. Residents may have easy access to fields, forests, or other natural resources. 4. Community cohesion. Due to the smaller size of rural settlements, there is often a strong sense of community. 
residents may have close social ties, and community activities may play a significant role in daily life. 5. Limited infrastructure. Rural areas may have limited infrastructure compared to urban centers. Access to amenities such as healthcare, education, and commercial services may be more restricted. 6. Traditional architecture. Buildings in rural settlements often reflect traditional architectural styles, and construction materials may be sourced locally. Rural settlements contribute to the overall diversity of human habitation, offering a different lifestyle and set of challenges compared to urban areas. They play a crucial role in sustaining agricultural practices, preserving cultural traditions, and providing a unique quality of life for their residents. A rural settlement unit that is different from the town in terms of its administrative status, social and economic characteristics and population density, is smaller and more backward, is generally engaged in agriculture, and its residences and other structures reflect this life. As a rural settlement, a village has properties such as mosques, schools, highlands, coppice, forest, in addition to residences, there are fields, vineyards and gardens. The smallest of the settlement units is the house. This is called the settlement nucleus. The distribution of settlement cores creates the settlement texture. Factors such as landforms, water resources, type of economic activity and security were effective in the formation of this distribution. Settlements where houses are far from each other are called dispersed settlements. These types of settlements, which are seen in places where the terrain is rugged, water resources are abundant and agricultural areas are fragmented, are more common in the Black Sea region than in other regions. In places where there is little hill and water resources are insufficient, houses are close to each other. Such settlements are called mass textured settlements. These types of settlements, where houses are generally located around water wells, fountains or religious buildings, are common in central Anatolia and southeastern Anatolia. The settlement formed by the distribution of houses randomly and over large areas is called loose textured settlement. Factors such as the structure of the land, its width, economic activity and social relations were effective in the formation of loosely textured settlements. This type of settlement is common in the Black Sea coastal zone. Collective village settlements refer to a type of rural community where multiple households or families live in close proximity to one another, forming a collective or clustered arrangement. In these settlements, residents share common spaces, resources, and often engage in communal activities. This type of settlement pattern is distinct from isolated settlements, where individual households are more spread out. Key characteristics of collective village settlements include 1. Proximity and clustering. Houses and structures in collective village settlements are grouped closely together, fostering a sense of community and shared living spaces. 2. Communal resources. Residents in collective villages often share resources such as common lands, water sources, or grazing areas for livestock. This communal approach promotes cooperation and mutual support. 3. Social cohesion. The close physical proximity of households in collective settlements often results in strong social bonds among community members. Shared traditions, celebrations, and communal events contribute to a cohesive social fabric. 4. Mutual assistance. The collective nature of these settlements encourages mutual assistance among residents. This can include shared agricultural practices, cooperative work on communal projects, and support during times of need. 5. Cultural traditions. Collective village settlements may have distinct cultural traditions that are shared among the community members. These traditions often revolve around agriculture, religious practices, and community celebrations. 6. Economic interdependence. Residents in collective villages may be economically interdependent, engaging in joint economic activities such as cooperative farming or collective production efforts. 7. Preservation of local identity. The collective nature of these settlements often contributes to the preservation of local identity and traditional ways of life. Residents may actively work to maintain their cultural heritage. Collective village settlements play a crucial role in shaping the rural landscape and contribute to the diversity of human habitation patterns. They exemplify the importance of community cooperation and shared resources in the context of rural living. Rural settlements differ in terms of their establishment locations. Various natural and human factors were effective in this. Rural settlements, it is generally found along streams, in valleys, at the foot of mountains, in plains with water, in areas close to forest land, and by sea and lakes. Collective village settlements refer to a type of rural community where multiple households or families live in close proximity to one another forming a collective or clustered arrangement. In these settlements, residents share common spaces, resources, and often engage in communal activities. This type of settlement pattern is distinct from isolated settlements, where individual households are more spread out. 
Key characteristics of collective village settlements include 1. Proximity and clustering. Houses and structures in collective village settlements are grouped closely together, fostering a sense of community and shared living spaces. 2. Communal resources. Residents in collective villages often share resources such as common lands, water sources, or grazing areas for livestock. This communal approach promotes cooperation and mutual support. 3. Social cohesion. The close physical proximity of households in collective settlements often results in strong social bonds among community members. Shared traditions, celebrations, and communal events contribute to a cohesive social fabric. 4. Mutual assistance. The collective nature of these settlements encourages mutual assistance among residents. This can include shared agricultural practices, cooperative work on communal projects, and support during times of need. 5. Cultural traditions. Collective village settlements may have distinct cultural traditions that are shared among the community members. These traditions often revolve around agriculture, religious practices, and community celebrations. 6. Economic interdependence. Residents in collective villages may be economically interdependent, engaging in joint economic activities such as cooperative farming or collective production efforts. 7. Preservation of local identity. The collective nature of these settlements often contributes to the preservation of local identity and traditional ways of life. Residents may actively work to maintain their cultural heritage. Collective village settlements play a crucial role in shaping the rural landscape and contribute to the diversity of human habitation patterns. They exemplify the importance of community cooperation and shared resources in the context of rural living. Slope and valley villages. These are villages established on a mountain slope or in a valley. Their livelihood is animal husbandry. They are less developed. There are many infrastructure problems. Most of our villages in the Black Sea, Mediterranean and Eastern Anatolia have this feature. In recent years, there has been a noticeable shift in the settlement patterns of villages situated on plains, moving away from the traditional collective arrangements. Several factors contribute to this transformation, primarily driven by advancements in technology, transportation, and communication. 1. Technological advancements. Agricultural technology, the adoption of modern agricultural practices and machinery has reduced the need for large labor forces in farming. Mechanization allows for more efficient and independent farming practices, diminishing the necessity for close-knit, collective settlements. 2. Transportation improvements. Accessibility, enhanced transportation infrastructure, including better roads and increased accessibility to urban centers, has made it easier for villagers to travel. This has led to a decentralization of settlements as individuals can commute to work, markets, and services without the constraints of proximity. 3. Communication Revolution Digital connectivity, the widespread availability of digital communication tools and the internet has transformed the way people connect. Villagers can now easily communicate and coordinate activities without the need for physical proximity, reducing the necessity for collective living. 4. Economic Diversification Diversified livelihoods, villagers are increasingly engaging in diverse economic activities beyond traditional agriculture. This economic diversification often necessitates access to different resources and markets, encouraging a more dispersed settlement pattern. 5. Changing Lifestyles Individual preferences. Changing lifestyles and individual preferences play a role in the shift toward more dispersed settlements. Some individuals may prefer greater privacy, autonomy, and personal space, prompting a move away from close collective arrangements. 6. Urbanization influence. Urban opportunities. The allure of urban opportunities, including better education, employment, and amenities, may encourage villagers to establish homes in more dispersed patterns while still maintaining connections to their rural roots. This shift in settlement patterns reflects the dynamic interplay between technology, societal changes, and economic developments. While it brings about new opportunities and choices for individuals in rural areas, it also underscores the impact of broader transformations on traditional ways of communal living. In dispersed settlements, houses are scattered over the land as a single or several houses. In places where the land is rugged and agricultural areas are small and fragmented, the distance between residences is large. The absence of the obligation to gather around a certain water source is effective in dispersed settlement. In our country, scattered settlements are mostly seen in the Black Sea region. Natural properties that affect whether rural settlements are collective or dispersed. Konya, rainfall is irregular. Water resources are insufficient. The slope is low. Agricultural areas are large. 
settlements are generally located at an altitude of 800 to 900 meters and are clustered. Aegean coast, rainfall is regular. Water resources are sufficient. Agriculture is done in the wide Graben plains between the mountains consisting of horsts. Mass rural settlements are at altitudes between 0 to 50 meters. Eastern Black Sea coast, rainfall is more regular. Water resources are sufficient. The slopes are rugged. There are scattered rural settlements on fragmented agricultural lands. The altitude of the settlements is 250 meters and more. This information shows that different geographical regions differ in terms of climate, water resources and settlement patterns. Settlement patterns and their duration are influenced by a myriad of factors, reflecting the dynamic interaction between human societies and their environment. Here are key factors that affect settlement patterns and duration. 1. Geographical features. Topography, the physical features of the land, such as mountains, rivers, and plains, influence settlement patterns. Flat and fertile areas may attract longer-lasting settlements, while rugged terrain can lead to more dispersed and temporary settlements. 2. Climate and natural resources. Climate conditions. Climate affects the suitability of an area for settlement. Harsh climates may lead to seasonal or temporary settlements, while moderate climates can support more permanent habitation. Natural resources. The availability of resources like water, fertile soil, and timber influences settlement patterns. Areas with abundant resources may sustain longer-lasting settlements. 3. Economic activities. Agriculture. Settlements often emerge near fertile land suitable for agriculture. The type of crops or livestock that can be sustained affects settlement patterns. Industry and trade, economic activities, including industrial development and trade routes, influence settlement locations. Urban centers often arise as hubs of economic activity. 4. Technological advancements. Transportation. Advances in transportation, from footpaths to highways, affect the accessibility of an area. Improved transportation can lead to the development of new settlements or the expansion of existing ones. 5. Cultural and social factors. Cultural practices, cultural preferences, traditions, and social structures influence settlement patterns. Cultural heritage may contribute to the preservation of settlements over time. Social organization, settlement duration can be influenced by how communities organize themselves socially. Strong social bonds may contribute to the longevity of a settlement. 6. Political and governance structures. Political stability. Political stability encourages long-term settlement. Unstable political conditions may lead to the abandonment of settlements. Governance systems. The effectiveness of governance, including the provision of services and infrastructure, affects settlement duration. 7. Environmental changes. Natural disasters. The susceptibility to natural disasters, such as floods or earthquakes, can impact settlement patterns. Areas prone to disasters may have shorter-lived settlements. 8. Population growth and migration. Population dynamics. Population growth and migration patterns influence settlement size and distribution. Rapid population growth may lead to the establishment of new settlements. 9. Technological changes. Communication technologies. Advances in communication technologies influence the need for physical proximity. Digital connectivity can impact settlement patterns by reducing the importance of geographical proximity. Understanding these factors provides insights into the complexities of settlement dynamics and the diverse ways in which human societies adapt to their surroundings over time. Rural settlements can be categorized based on their duration, reflecting the temporal aspect of human habitation in these areas. 1. Permanent Rural Settlements These are enduring settlements characterized by a stable and continuous presence of inhabitants. They often have established infrastructure, community institutions, and are well integrated into the local landscape. Agriculture and traditional livelihoods are common in these settlements. 2. Temporary Rural Settlements Temporary settlements are established for specific purposes or seasons. Nomadic or semi-nomadic communities may set up temporary dwellings for agricultural activities, grazing, or other economic pursuits. These settlements are not intended for long-term habitation. 3. Historical Rural Settlements Historical rural settlements have a prolonged existence and may span several generations. They often carry cultural and historical significance, preserving traditional ways of life. Historical rural settlements contribute to the cultural heritage of a region. 4. Dispersed Rural Settlements Dispersed settlements are characterized by dwellings scattered across a rural landscape. 
Individuals or families may choose to live in separate locations, often for reasons related to privacy, autonomy, or changing lifestyles. 5. Collective village settlements. Collective settlements involve a group of households living in close proximity, typically forming a village or hamlet. These settlements may have communal spaces, shared resources, and a sense of collective identity. 6. Nomadic and semi-nomadic settlements. Nomadic settlements involve communities that move periodically in search of resources such as water, pasture, or seasonal work. Semi-nomadic settlements may have both fixed and mobile elements, adapting to changing environmental conditions. 7. Newly established rural settlements. These settlements emerge in response to changing economic or social factors. Individuals or groups may establish new rural settlements seeking economic opportunities, improved living conditions, or escaping urban congestion. 8. Abandoned Rural Settlements Settlements that were once inhabited but have been deserted over time fall into this category. Abandonment can result from factors like environmental changes, economic decline, or shifts in population dynamics. 9. Cottage or Clustered Rural Settlements Cottage settlements consist of isolated dwellings or small clusters of houses, often with agricultural land attached. These settlements may serve as weekend retreats or secondary residences. The duration of rural settlements is influenced by a combination of historical, environmental, economic, and cultural factors. Understanding the diverse nature of rural settlements provides insights into the adaptive strategies of communities across different regions and time periods. Temporary Rural Settlements Temporary settlements are established for specific purposes or seasons. Nomadic or semi-nomadic communities may set up temporary dwellings for agricultural activities, grazing, or other economic pursuits. These settlements are not intended for long-term habitation. Temporary settlements in Turkey can arise due to various factors, reflecting the dynamic nature of human activities and environmental conditions. Here are some causes of temporary settlements in Turkey. 1. Seasonal agricultural activities. Many temporary settlements in rural areas are established during planting and harvesting seasons. Agricultural workers migrate to specific regions for temporary work, setting up temporary dwellings close to the fields. 2. Nomadic and semi-nomadic traditions. Some communities in Turkey follow nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyles. These groups move with their herds in search of grazing lands, establishing temporary settlements for varying durations. 3. Tourism and leisure activities. Coastal regions and popular tourist destinations in Turkey often witness the establishment of temporary settlements during peak tourist seasons. Individuals may set up temporary dwellings or camps for leisure and recreation. 4. Construction projects. Temporary settlements can emerge around construction sites where workers reside during the construction phase. These settlements disband once the construction project is completed. 5. Festivals and events. Temporary settlements may be set up during festivals, cultural events, or religious gatherings. Participants and attendees often establish temporary campsites for the duration of the event. 6. Military installations and exercises. The military may establish temporary settlements for training exercises or strategic purposes. These settlements are typically temporary and may be dismantled after the exercises are completed. 7. Emergency and disaster response. Temporary settlements can be established in the aftermath of natural disasters or emergencies. This includes the provision of temporary shelters for displaced populations. 8. Mining and resource extraction. Temporary settlements may emerge around mining or resource extraction sites. Workers and their families may reside temporarily near extraction sites, moving as the resource is depleted or when the operation concludes. 9. Infrastructure development. During large-scale infrastructure projects, temporary settlements may be set up to accommodate construction workers and support staff. These settlements serve the immediate needs of the workforce. 10. Transhumance Practices Some communities in Turkey practice transhumance, where they move between different elevations with their herds according to the changing seasons. Temporary settlements are established in highland areas during specific times of the year. 11. Educational and Research Camps Temporary settlements can be established for educational or research purposes, such as field studies, archaeological excavations, or ecological research. Permanent rural settlements in Turkey are characterized by their enduring presence, stable population, and established infrastructure. 
These settlements play a vital role in the country's agricultural and rural landscape. Here are some features and examples of permanent rural settlements in Turkey. 1. Agricultural focus. Permanent rural settlements in Turkey are often centered around agricultural activities. They have fertile land for farming, and residents engage in crop cultivation, livestock farming, and other agricultural practices. 2. Community infrastructure. These settlements have well-developed infrastructure to support the daily lives of residents. This includes schools, health clinics, local markets, and community centers. 3. Traditional architecture. Permanent rural settlements often feature traditional architectural styles that reflect the cultural and historical heritage of the region. Houses may be constructed using locally available materials. 4. Long-term population presence. Residents of permanent rural settlements typically have long-term ties to the land and the community. Families may have lived in the area for generations, contributing to the continuity of local traditions and customs. 5. Water resources. Access to water is crucial for permanent rural settlements. Settlements located near rivers, lakes, or with reliable water sources tend to have more sustainable and permanent populations. 6. Transportation links. While not as heavily connected as urban areas, permanent rural settlements have basic transportation links, such as roads or pathways, that facilitate access to neighboring towns and cities. 7. Cultural heritage. Permanent rural settlements often preserve cultural heritage through traditional practices, festivals, and community events. These settlements contribute to the diversity of Turkey's cultural landscape. 8. Economic diversification. In addition to agriculture, some permanent rural settlements diversify their economic activities. This may include small-scale industries, artisanal crafts, or agro-tourism to supplement income from farming. 9. Village markets. Permanent rural settlements often host weekly or monthly markets where local farmers and artisans can sell their products. These markets serve as economic hubs and social gathering places. Examples of permanent rural settlements in Turkey include Derikoy, Çanakkale, a traditional village with stone houses and agricultural landscapes. Sirens, Izmir, known for its historic architecture, vineyards, and olive orchards. Mustafa Pasa, Nefşehir, located in the Cappadocia region, known for its unique cave dwellings. These settlements showcase the diversity of permanent rural communities in Turkey, each contributing to the country's rich cultural and agricultural tapestry. All these nomenclatures are local expressions in Turkey and do not have exact equivalents in English. As a rural settlement, the Mahale is different from the neighborhood that is an autonomous community tot is governed by Mutar. They are settlement units that are separated from a village but cannot be considered as a separate village since they do not have an administrative function. They can develop and or grow. Become a village. It is common in western Black Sea, western Anatolia, Mediterranean, and Marmara. Mesra its economy is mostly based on agriculture. Livestock activities gain intensity in places with high elevation. It is widespread in eastern Anatolia, southeastern Anatolia, central Anatolia, and eastern Black Sea. Divan they are rural settlements where several mahals are united as a single maturk, headman. It is especially common in the western Black Sea. Its economy is generally based on agriculture. Siflik they are settlements consisting of one or more houses, warehouses and agricultural land. In some of these, animal husbandry, in some agriculture, and in others both activities are done together. It is common in Thrace, Aegean, Mediterranean, and central Anatolia. Temporary rural settlements in Turkey are characterized by their transitory nature, often established for specific purposes or seasonal activities. Here are some features and examples of temporary rural settlements in Turkey. 1. Seasonal agricultural camps. Temporary settlements may be set up during planting and harvesting seasons to accommodate agricultural workers. These camps provide temporary housing close to the fields where labor-intensive tasks are carried out. 2. Nomadic and semi-nomadic camps. Nomadic communities in Turkey may establish temporary camps as they move with their herds in search of grazing lands. These camps serve as temporary habitats during specific times of the year. 3. Construction worker camps. Temporary settlements can emerge around construction sites, providing housing for workers engaged in construction projects. These settlements disband once the construction is completed. 4. Tourist and leisure camps. During peak tourist seasons, individuals may set up temporary campsites in rural areas, 
especially in coastal regions or near popular tourist destinations, for recreational purposes. 5. Festival and event camps. Temporary settlements may be established during festivals, cultural events, or religious gatherings. Participants often set up temporary campsites near the event venue. 6. Emergency and disaster response camps. Temporary settlements are often created in the aftermath of natural disasters or emergencies to provide temporary shelters for displaced populations. 7. Mining and resource extraction camps. Temporary settlements may emerge around mining or resource extraction sites to accommodate workers during the extraction phase. These camps are typically dismantled after the resource is depleted. 8. Educational and research camps. Temporary settlements can be established for educational or research purposes, such as field studies, archaeological excavations, or ecological research. 9. Military training camps. The military may set up temporary camps for training exercises or strategic purposes. These camps are typically temporary and dismantled after the exercises are completed. 10. Transhumans camps. Communities practicing transhumans may set up temporary camps in highland areas during specific seasons, moving between different elevations with their herds. Examples of temporary rural settlements in Turkey may include agricultural worker camps in fertile regions, nomadic camps in highland areas, and temporary campsites near tourist destinations during peak travel seasons. These settlements highlight the adaptability of communities in responding to specific needs or environmental conditions. As I mentioned before all these nomenclatures are local expressions in Turkey and do not have exact equivalents in English. Com they are settlements connected to the village, which are mostly used in summer depending on the grazing areas for livestock. They can be found in southeastern Anatolia, especially in eastern Anatolia. Ago they are settlements surrounded by fences or stones, built for sheep and or goats to spend the night near villages. It is found in all places where animal husbandry is done. Yaila they are the most common settlements. Yalas are the areas where people go to graze their animals in summer. They are also used for tourism or recreation at the present time. The Yalas on the slopes facing the sea in the North Anatolian mountain ranges have been open to tourism. With the development of Yala tourism, luxury residences and hotels have proliferated here. A similar change is observed in the plateaus on the Taurus and Aegean mountains. In the southern Anatolian mountain ranges, Yalakluk in the classical sense is done in the higher regions. This type of transhumance, maintained by nomadic Yoriks, continues as an activity based on animal husbandry. The same activity can be found in the eastern and southeastern parts of our country. The Yala settlements in the Taurus Mountains are used as summer resorts to protect themselves from heat. Oba. They are settlements consisting of the tents of nomadic shepherds. It is common in the western and southeastern Taurus Mountains, eastern Anatolia, and southeastern Anatolia. Dam. They are temporary settlements where small-scale agricultural activities and livestock activities are carried out. It is found in Aegean and Lakes region, Bozkata, Goxiata. Other temporary settlements, vineyard houses, daily antler, summer houses, stone quarries, lime quarries, sand quarries, gas stations, mills. Rural settlements can be categorized based on the materials used in constructing houses, reflecting the local availability of resources and traditional building practices. Here are some types of rural settlements in Turkey classified according to housing material. 1. Stone-built villages. In regions where stones are abundant, rural settlements may feature houses constructed primarily with local stones. These settlements showcase durable and weather-resistant architecture. 2. Adobe or mud brick villages. Rural settlements built with adobe or mud bricks are common in areas where clay-rich soil is readily available. Adobe houses offer good insulation and are well suited to local climate conditions. 3. Timber built villages. In regions with abundant forests, rural settlements may use timber as the primary building material. Timber built villages often have houses constructed with wooden frames and panels. 4. Cave dwellings. Some rural settlements, particularly in regions with soft rock formations, may feature cave dwellings. Houses are carved into natural rock formations providing natural insulation. 5. Straw or thatch-roofed villages. Rural settlements with thatched roofs are found in areas where straw or reeds are readily available. Thatch-roofed houses are well suited to rural landscapes and can be seen in traditional villages. 6. Mixed material villages. Many rural settlements in Turkey use a combination of materials based on local availability. For example, 
Houses may have stone walls with timber roofs or adobe walls with thatched roofs. 7. Brick-built villages. In areas with brickmaking traditions, rural settlements may feature houses constructed with fired bricks. Brick-built villages showcase a more formal and structured architectural style. 8. Bamboo or reed villages. In certain regions, bamboo or reed may be used as the primary building material. These materials are lightweight and offer flexibility in construction. 9. Modern construction villages. Some rural settlements may adopt modern construction materials such as concrete and steel. This often occurs in areas with increased urbanization and access to modern building supplies. 10. Tented or nomadic villages. Nomadic or semi-nomadic communities may use tents made of animal hides or woven fabrics. These temporary dwellings are easily collapsible and movable. The choice of housing material in rural settlements is influenced by the availability of resources, climate conditions, and traditional building practices. Each type of material reflects the adaptation of communities to their specific environment and cultural heritage. Several factors influence the choice of housing materials in rural settlements in Turkey. The selection of materials is often shaped by a combination of historical, geographical, economic, and cultural factors. Here are some key factors affecting the types of housing materials used in Turkey. 1. Geographical location. The geographical features of a region, such as the availability of specific materials like stone, timber, clay, or reeds, greatly influence the choice of housing materials. Different regions have varying natural resources that impact construction practices. 2. Climate and environmental conditions. The local climate plays a crucial role in determining the suitability of certain materials. For example, regions with high rainfall may favor materials with good water resistance, while areas with extreme temperatures may benefit from materials with insulation properties. 3. Traditional building practices. The historical and cultural heritage of a region often dictates traditional building practices. Communities tend to use materials that have been passed down through generations, reflecting the architectural style of the area. 4. Economic factors. The economic status of a community influences the availability and affordability of certain building materials. In economically disadvantaged regions, communities may rely on locally available and cost-effective materials. 5. Local availability of resources. The proximity and availability of building materials in the local environment significantly impact construction choices. Villages situated near forests may use timber, while those near quarries may prefer stone. 6. Cultural and Architectural Heritage The cultural identity of a community and its architectural heritage contribute to the choice of housing materials. Communities often preserve and pass down traditional building methods that reflect their cultural identity. 7. Urbanization and Modernization As regions undergo urbanization and modernization, there may be a shift towards using modern construction materials such as concrete and steel. This change is often more pronounced in areas closer to urban centers. 8. Government policies and regulations. Government regulations, building codes, and policies can impact the choice of housing materials. Certain materials may be encouraged or discouraged based on safety, environmental, or aesthetic considerations. 9. Technological advancements. Advancements in construction technology can influence the availability and adoption of new materials. Communities may adopt modern materials for construction if they prove to be more efficient or cost-effective. 10. Social and community preferences. Local preferences and social considerations within a community also play a role in selecting housing materials. The shared preferences of a community may lead to the widespread use of certain materials. Wooden houses in Turkey, often referred to as a spevler in Turkish, hold a special place in the country's architectural heritage. These wooden structures showcase a traditional building style that has been adapted to the local environment, climate conditions, and available resources. Here are some key aspects of wooden houses in Turkey. 1. Architectural Characteristics Wooden houses in Turkey feature unique architectural characteristics that vary across different regions. The design of these houses reflects the cultural identity of the area and is often influenced by historical and environmental factors. 2. Regions with Wooden House Tradition Wooden houses are prevalent in regions with abundant forests, such as the Black Sea region, Marmara region, and parts of the Aegean region. These areas historically relied on timber as a primary building material. 3. Construction material 
Timber, particularly softwoods like pine and fir, is the primary material used in the construction of wooden houses. The choice of wood offers benefits such as natural insulation, flexibility, and aesthetic appeal. 4. Traditional Building Techniques Traditional building techniques for wooden houses involve the use of timber frames, wooden beams, and wooden planks for walls and floors. These techniques have been passed down through generations. 5. Climatic Considerations Wooden houses are well suited to the climatic conditions of certain regions in Turkey. The natural properties of wood provide insulation against both cold and hot weather, contributing to the comfort of the inhabitants. 6. Aesthetic Appeal Wooden houses often feature intricate carvings, decorative elements, and colorful paint, adding to their aesthetic appeal. The design details reflect the cultural and artistic preferences of the local communities. 7. Sustainability In regions where timber is sourced sustainably, wooden houses can be considered an environmentally friendly choice. The use of locally harvested wood contributes to the sustainability of construction practices. 8. Adaptation to terrain Wooden houses in Turkey are often adapted to the local topography. In hilly or mountainous regions, houses may be built on stilts or terraced into the landscape to accommodate the uneven terrain. 9. Tourist Attractions Wooden houses, with their charm and historical significance, are often tourist attractions. Villages with well-preserved wooden houses attract visitors interested in experiencing traditional Turkish architecture. 10. Preservation Efforts some regions actively engage in preservation efforts to maintain and restore historic wooden houses. These initiatives aim to protect the architectural heritage and cultural identity associated with wooden structures. Mud brick houses, also known as adobe houses, have been an integral part of Turkey's architectural heritage, especially in regions where clay-rich soil is readily available. Here are key aspects of mud brick houses in Turkey. 1. Architectural Characteristics Mud brick houses exhibit a distinct architectural style, often characterized by thick walls, flat roofs, and simple designs. The construction style may vary based on regional influences and cultural preferences. 2. Regions with mud brick house tradition Mud brick houses are commonly found in areas where clay soil is abundant. Regions with a tradition of mud brick construction include parts of central Anatolia, Cappadocia, and certain areas in the eastern and southeastern parts of the country. 3. Construction material The primary material used in mud brick houses is a mixture of clay, sand, straw, and water. The mud mixture is shaped into bricks and left to dry in the sun before being used in construction. 4. Thermal properties Mud brick houses offer excellent thermal insulation, helping to regulate indoor temperatures. The thick walls provide protection against both cold and hot weather, making them suitable for the local climate. 5. Traditional building techniques Traditional building techniques involve shaping mud into bricks, allowing them to dry naturally, and then using the bricks to construct walls. The use of mud as a building material has been a long-standing practice in many Turkish communities. 6. Integration with nature Mud brick houses often blend harmoniously with the natural landscape. The earthy tones of the mud complement the surroundings, and the construction method minimizes the environmental impact. 7. Durability and Sustainability Well-maintained mud brick houses can be durable, especially in regions where the climate is dry. The use of locally sourced materials contributes to the sustainability of construction practices. 8. Adaptation to Terrain Mud brick houses are adaptable to different terrains. In regions with uneven topography, houses may be constructed using techniques that integrate with the natural contours of the land. 9. Artistic Elements While mud brick houses may have a simple and utilitarian appearance, some feature decorative elements. Carvings, reliefs, or painted designs may be incorporated to add artistic touches to the structures. 10. Cultural Significance Mud brick houses hold cultural significance, reflecting the historical practices and lifestyle of communities in certain regions of Turkey. The construction method has been passed down through generations. Stone houses in Turkey, 
often characterized by their durable and aesthetically pleasing construction, have been an integral part of the country's architectural heritage. Here are key aspects of stone houses in Turkey. 1. Architectural Characteristics Stone houses in Turkey showcase diverse architectural styles, influenced by the local culture, historical periods, and regional preferences. The use of stone provides a solid and timeless appearance. 2. Regions with Stone House Tradition Stone houses are found in various regions of Turkey, including areas with ample natural stone resources. Examples include villages in Cappadocia, Aegean coastal towns, and mountainous regions. 3. Construction Material The primary construction material for stone houses is locally sourced stone, such as limestone or volcanic rock. The stones are cut or shaped to form walls, and mortar may be used to bind the stones together. 4. Thermal Properties Stone houses offer good thermal mass, helping to regulate indoor temperatures. The dense nature of stone provides insulation against both heat and cold, contributing to energy efficiency. 5. Traditional Building Techniques Traditional stone construction involves skilled masonry work, with artisans shaping and arranging stones to create sturdy walls. Some regions have specific techniques, such as dry stone walling or using stones of varying sizes for added stability. 6. Adaptation to terrain Stone houses often adapt to the natural terrain, with structures built into hillsides or terraced landscapes. The use of stone allows for flexibility in construction on uneven topography. 7. Artistic elements Stone houses may feature intricate carvings, decorative elements, or unique architectural details. These artistic elements contribute to the cultural and historical significance of the structures. 8. Durability and Longevity Stone houses are known for their durability and longevity. Properly constructed stone structures can withstand the test of time, requiring minimal maintenance. 9. Integration with Nature Stone houses often integrate seamlessly with the natural environment. The earthy tones of the stone complement the landscape, creating a harmonious relationship with nature. 10. Cultural Heritage Stone houses are an important part of Turkey's cultural heritage, representing the craftsmanship and architectural traditions of different regions. Some stone houses may be preserved as cultural landmarks. 11. Modern Influences In some regions, modern building techniques and materials may be integrated with traditional stone construction to meet contemporary standards while preserving the aesthetic appeal. Stone houses in Turkey not only serve as residences but also contribute to the unique character of villages and towns. Various architectural structures are observed based on the specific type of stone prevalent in distinct geographical regions. Limestone is predominantly utilized in the Mediterranean region, while andesite and basalt find common application in the central Anatolia and eastern Anatolia regions. Reinforced concrete houses in Turkey represent a prevalent construction method characterized by the use of reinforced concrete as the primary building material. This modern construction approach has become widespread in urban and suburban areas across the country. Here are key aspects of reinforced concrete houses in Turkey. 1. Architectural Characteristics Reinforced concrete houses in Turkey feature contemporary architectural designs that vary based on individual preferences, regional influences, and the specific requirements of urban planning. 2. Regions with reinforced concrete house tradition This construction method is commonly employed in both urban and suburban areas throughout Turkey. It is particularly dominant in cities and towns where modernization and urban development are prominent. 3. Construction Material Reinforced concrete, consisting of concrete and steel reinforcement, serves as the primary building material. The combination of these materials provides structural strength, durability, and flexibility in design. 4. Thermal Properties The thermal properties of reinforced concrete contribute to energy efficiency, offering insulation against external temperature fluctuations. Additional insulation materials may be incorporated to enhance thermal performance. 5. Construction Techniques Construction techniques involve the casting of reinforced concrete into molds, forming walls, columns, and slabs. This method allows for flexibility in creating diverse architectural forms and structural configurations. 6. Seismic Resilience 
reinforced concrete houses are well suited to Turkey's seismic conditions. The material's inherent strength and ductility provide a degree of resilience against earthquakes, a critical consideration in regions prone to seismic activity. 7. Adaptability to Urbanization The use of reinforced concrete aligns with the needs of urbanization, facilitating the construction of multi-story buildings commonly found in urban centers. This adaptability allows for efficient land use in densely populated areas. 8. Modern Infrastructure Reinforced concrete construction is often associated with modern infrastructure and amenities. Houses built using this method can accommodate modern conveniences such as central heating, air conditioning, and advanced plumbing systems. 9. Architectural Innovation The versatility of reinforced concrete allows for architectural innovation, enabling designers to create aesthetically pleasing and functional spaces. The material's adaptability contributes to the diversity of architectural styles. 10. Urban Planning Considerations Reinforced concrete houses play a significant role in contemporary urban planning, contributing to the development of modern cityscapes. The construction method aligns with the need for durable, cost-effective, and rapidly constructed housing. 11. Integration of Technology The construction of reinforced concrete houses often involves the integration of modern construction technologies, including prefabrication, advanced formwork systems, and computer-aided design, CAD. Reinforced concrete houses in Turkey reflect the intersection of traditional architectural practices with modern construction methods. The use of this material has played a pivotal role in meeting the demands of urbanization and addressing the challenges posed by seismic conditions in the region. Prefabricated houses in Turkey have gained prominence as a modern construction solution, providing a rapid and efficient method of housing construction. Here are key aspects of prefabricated houses in Turkey. 1. Architectural Characteristics Prefabricated houses in Turkey are characterized by their modular and factory-built components, offering flexibility in design. These structures can range from single-family homes to multi-story buildings. 2. Regions with prefabricated house tradition Prefabricated construction is prevalent throughout Turkey, catering to various urban and rural settings. It is particularly favored for its speed of construction, making it suitable for both temporary and permanent housing solutions. 3. Construction Material The primary construction material for prefabricated houses is typically steel or wooden structural frames, complemented by lightweight and durable materials for walls, roofs, and insulation. 4. Rapid Construction Prefabricated houses are known for their quick assembly on-site. Components are manufactured in a controlled factory environment, reducing construction time and allowing for faster occupancy compared to traditional building methods. 5. Adaptability to various settings Prefabricated houses are adaptable to diverse settings, including urban, suburban, and rural areas. They can be utilized for residential, commercial, or industrial purposes, providing versatility in construction applications. 6. Sustainability and Energy Efficiency Prefabricated houses often incorporate sustainable and energy-efficient features, including energy-efficient insulation, solar panels, and advanced HVAC systems. These features contribute to reduced energy consumption and environmental impact. 7. Affordability and Cost-Effectiveness The controlled manufacturing process of prefabricated components allows for cost predictability and efficiency. Prefabricated houses are often considered more cost-effective than traditional construction methods, making them accessible to a broader range of homeowners. 8. Customization Options Prefabricated houses offer a range of customization options, allowing homeowners to choose from various designs, finishes, and layouts. This flexibility accommodates individual preferences and architectural styles. 9. Seismic Resilience Prefabricated houses are designed with consideration for seismic resilience, an essential factor in regions prone to earthquakes. The lightweight and flexible nature of the construction materials contribute to improved seismic performance. 10. Transportability Prefabricated components are designed for ease of transportation to the construction site. This feature is particularly advantageous in remote or challenging locations where traditional construction materials may be difficult to transport. 11. Technological Integration Prefabricated construction often involves the integration of modern technologies, such as computer-aided design, CAD, building information modeling, BIM, 
and advanced manufacturing techniques, ensuring precision and quality in the production process. Prefabricated houses in Turkey represent a modern and efficient response to the demand for quick, sustainable, and customizable housing solutions. The adaptability and cost-effectiveness of this construction method contribute to its widespread use across various contexts in the country.